we've done a lot of work actually with MIT. We have a, a lab full of like six MIT engineers working on uh, magnetic separations. And um, over the years, it's kind of a refresher course in physics and how magnetic particles work. But one of the things that you have to think about when you're separating cells is if the process is really slow, you have a tube and your cells are piling up on the side of the tube, or your cells are gradually accumulating on a particle. If the beads are small, keep in mind, no matter whose beads they are, if the beads are small, it takes a long time. And if it takes a long time, then your first cell to get to the side of the tube or to the magnet or the magnetic force is there attached for quite a while before the next cell comes along. So what's really important for us in cell biology, if you think about it, is you want the cells to move over to the wall and you want to get on with the next step. You don't want them piling up on top of one another, getting starved from oxygen and nutrients. So we've noticed a big difference in the uh, yield of cells, specifically the yield based on the size of the particle. So larger particles give better yields because in a short period of time, 100% of the cells are pulled to the side. And those cells thus have, with bigger particle separation, better viability and purity. So all those three parameters are magnified by bigger particles because you spend less time moving them over and you don't lose a lot of cells in yield because the force wasn't great enough. So we, uh, based on physics and a lot of um, fluid dynamic courses that I'm now getting uh, filled in from our wonderful graduate students from MIT, um, big is pretty good for cell separations.